Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal that we not lose the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. From the book of Genesis. Laban said to Jacob, Because you are my kinsman, should you therefore serve me for nothing? Tell me, what shall your wages be? Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah's eyes were lovely, and Rachel was graceful and beautiful. Jacob loved Rachel, so he said, I will serve you seven years for your younger daughter, Rachel. Laban said, It is better that I give her to you than I should give her to any other man. Stay with me. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed to him but a few days because of the love he had for her. Then Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife that I may go into her, for my time is completed. So Laban gathered together all the people of the place and made a feast. But in the evening he took his daughter Leah and brought her to Jacob, and he went in to her. When morning came, it was Leah. And Jacob said to Laban, What is this you have done to me? Did I not serve you for Rachel? Why then have you deceived me? Laban said, This is not done in our country, giving the younger before the firstborn. Complete the week of this one, and we will give you the other also in return for serving me another seven years. Jacob did so and completed her week. Then Laban gave him his daughter Rachel as a wife. The word of the Lord. We're going to read Psalm 128 responsibly by viewers. Happy are they, happy are they all who fear the Lord and who follow in his ways. You shall eat the fruit of your labor. Happiness and prosperity shall be yours. Your wife shall be like fruitful, like a fruitful vine within your house. Your children will be, will like all our shoots round your, about your ta table. The man, man who fears the Lord shall thus indeed be blessed. The Lord, the Lord bless you from Zion, and may you see the, proper, the prosperity of all Jerusalem all the days of your life. May you live to see your children's children. May peace be upon Israel. The second reading is Paul to the Romans. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that every spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God who searches the heart knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom we foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. 
And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is, who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. This is the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Another parable Jesus put before the crowds. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into the baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Christ. Abide in me, O Christ, and I in you. Amen. Please be seated. Have you understood all of this? And they answered, yes. It caught my attention. I was sort of joking with another priest here recently. If they were frustrated and upset, perhaps, of this Jesus who continues to talk to them about agricultural things and seeds and fish and weeping and gnashing of teeth. That, that's a perspective certainly that Matthew's audience would have known about and couldn't have gotten away from uh, in their worldview. Here we are after hearing this sort of random collection of parables that Matthew sticks kind of right in the middle of the gospel there. And I love the question, have you understood all of this? And they answered, yes. <laughs> thinking, okay, yes, I'm sure they really understand as much as I understand right now. But they say, you know, kind of, yes, Master, and, and go on their way. 
Do they understand the idea of what the kingdom of heaven is all about? Because we just had these different examples of um, the kingdom of heaven is like this, the kingdom of heaven is like that, etc. And they're expecting one thing, the Israelites, for sure. They were expecting, as we often sing about in our hymns, uh, we, and there's certainly evidence of this in, scriptures, uh, in scripture as well, of king or ruler. Uh, that's who they were expecting their Messiah to be, the ancient Israelites. Um, and it was someone who should come, you know, riding in of the utmost importance and would kind of wipe out all of their enemies and then everything would be well and good and wonderful for the Israelites. That was their thought, I think, in general, of who this Messiah was. And yet you heard what, they're ta- what Jesus is telling them his kingdom of heaven is like. Also, in the Greek and Roman culture that they were in, um, they would have known, uh, that their gr- would have known the Greek and Roman myths. Um, I have a person in my house right now who is rather obsessed with Roman and Greek mythology. Uh, And there are these lovely epic battles uh, with gods that have humans in disguise, in human disguise. There's talking animals. There's all this sort of warfare and these epic battles that are being um, fought. That was also in the culture that these who had gathered and had been following Jesus around to listen to him Um, that was also kind of in the water that they were swimming in, if you will. And yet, those are the expectations, and yet what we have is Jesus, yet again, talking about ordinary life, the familiar, farming, fishing, baking, trees, life um, as would have been experienced by the people who were listening, ordinary things, that this, Jesus seems to be saying, is the kingdom of heaven. And it looks like this. And it is, here's another example. And Jesus goes on and on. I think the important thing to remember for Matthew's gospel is from Matthew's perspective, the kingdom of heaven is already here with Jesus' arrival. If you've heard me say that before, um, it, it just, you just, it, that's one of his big points that he's trying to get us to understand is that we don't have to wait necessarily for the great by and by, which will be great. I'm not sure what it will look like. I don't think anyone really does. I trust that it will be amazing and, and uh, a peace beyond any understanding I uh, could have in my mortal life. Um, but we don't have to wait for that because Jesus is here. The kingdom is here. And in fact, when John is telling the people of, about Jesus' arrival way back at the beginning of the third chapter, it is Jesus, or it is John who is saying, repent, repent, the kingdom of heaven has come near. The kingdom of God has come near. And 10 verses later, that is who Jesus has baptized him. So you have to think that Jesus, too, understood that he, with his incarnation, was a piece, an example, um, a way to connect with what that kingdom of heaven could be. And so then we go around and have that. Jesus heals people. He sees outcasts. He sees the poor. He talks to people he shouldn't be talking to. All of those are little examples of the ways in which the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, has already arrived, in particular through these stories and these healings and these encounters and experiences. It has come near. So then it, to me, makes sense that I guess I could have that same question again. Have you understood all of this? And they answered, yes. And now, they're going to be told the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. You pro- this is somewhat common knowledge, but just a refresher. That mustard seed wasn't really an attractive, desirable thing to have in your fields, right? It was actually another name for it is a trash bush or a, tr- a trash tree, a, a, tree a, 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 a trash tree. 
it was not something that it choked out the other crops. It was, it was not a desirable thing to have and to see. And yet Jesus is saying, here the kingdom of heaven is like this thing you don't want any part of because it grows into this amazing bush and it, it nurtures the birds and the things that come along and it, it gives them shelter. Out of a trash tree, Jesus is saying, this can happen. It's not the stately cedars of Lebanon that they, they uh, built the temple in, that they brought in these sacred stately trees. Jesus doesn't say the kingdom of God is like the cedars of Lebanon. No, it's a mustard seed. And the yeast that the uh, woman, uh, the, the woman is baking, right, can also be translated leaven, and it's not yeast like you, you and I really traditionally think of. It's, it's, it has a different understanding in this culture. Uh, leaven in the ancient world would have been known to be something that was dangerous and could corrupt. So why is Jesus saying the kingdom of God is like this leavened bread that is dangerous and can, and can, cor and can corrupt? It happens, right? with this leaven is sort of a starter. And you have to let the starter in, sort of age, right, in order to continue to make more bread. Well, if you let that starter age too long in this world, it spoils. In fact, it would still do the same today, right? So it goes bad. And then it's, you can also get food poisoning. So it can be lethal, right? But if you don't let it wait long enough, then you don't get anything to leaven or make your, to, to bake with your bread, so you're sort of out of luck, as it were. So it didn't necessarily have the best reputation, this idea of leaven. And yet here we find this kingdom of God is like this bread that is leavened and mixed with three measures of flour. Out of that dangerous, potentially dangerous leaven can come enough food or bread for a wedding party when I looked up how much would three measures of flour produce. More abundance out of something that is a little sketch, you could say, right? It's corrupt and it's dangerous. Out of trash, out of waste, right? Jesus continues to teach us how we can be transformed, how it can be transformed and made into something beyond our wildest imaginations and to be offered to the world. And it's already here. Jesus has already ushered it in and it has been happening since his arrival and will continue to happen. And so I was thinking about these images of taking just meaningless trash, waste, and what are some images in our world today that might equate in the same way these examples that Jesus gave of these parables in his time and in his age? And I came up with a couple of the different examples and I'm sure I would invite you all as well to think about um, what they could be and what you see in your world that has the same um, uh, illustration of how something can be utterly transformed from a large global scale to a personal to a communal, all of these different levels, right? And so I was reminded of a documentary that I had seen quite a while ago. It's called The Landfill Harmonic, the Philharmonic, right? It's in Paraguay. And this is a slum village, well, town, really, that lives on mountains of trash. Trash heap, trash heap, just everywhere. There are people who go out and that's their job is to pick things out of the trash that maybe they could sell later for some money because you'll, they'll do anything that they're trying to survive and so they pick through all of these mountains of trash. And one of the founders of this um, Philharmonic uh, said, you know, the world brings us trash and we bring the world music. And so through the uh, work and, and idea of uh, uh, an engineer who happened in this situation, with time he recognized, okay, these kids, some are so, they have nothing to do. Some families have disowned kids. They have gotten in such trouble. This is, this is a horrible situation. And he comes up with this idea, we could make recycled 
um, instruments and make a philharmonic out of it. And this is a touring orchestra. Uh, you can look them up. It's a landfill uh, harmonic um, from Paraguay. But I love the image and their music. Um, it, it touches you. Uh, and it's all made from things that were thrown away, deemed useless, uh, and in the big mountains of trash that they called home next to the slums that they lived in. If you need a little hope and a little inspiration, I would recommend that one to you. Now, if you want something a little closer to home that can, can give you an image of transforming things that are trash and throwaway things, some of you are not going to be surprised to hear me say this, just think about compost, because you know I compost, honestly, at sort of an on-again, off-again process for me, but there's a lot of ways to compost. There's a lot of methods to compost and take all of your waste in your kitchen or your yard, and with time, uh, and so, it, you know, it can be transformed into this amazing fertilizer that you can put on your garden and you can literally see the transformation happen from the trash over time to this nutrient-dense compost that feeds the plants that you have that you can actually literally see the life happening in front of you. There's another example. I think another example that you all can probably relate to is right here in our pews. It was a couple of years ago, we were in COVID and we were going not even in the building and we were wondering what's gonna become of the church? Will people come back? What will it be like once we do make our way through this? And yet, here we are, right? Somehow, almost miraculously, here we are in a place that the world in general, especially in America, doesn't have a lot of trust in religion uh, and institutions, and yet we have people still coming across our doors who are trying to find a way to practice following Christ, and they have found us one way or another. Out of empty pews, here we are not where I would have thought we would have been. Friday night we had a sleepover for some kiddos, and what I'm most thrilled about is even if we didn't have, we had a couple families who couldn't make it, we still have enough kids to have the event. And so we had the event. There might have been a little uh, dance talent sort of singing competition here, right up here, if you can imagine that, with some flashlights in the dark. There might have been some pattering around and a little bit of hide and seek. Um, there was some movie watching and some swimming, and all slept relatively well, and all parents are back and, and, and still, you know, functioning today. Now, it was the most relaxed sort of children youth event I ever remember being at, honestly. But we woke up on uh, Saturday morning, and we made Eucharist bread. And that's what we're going to use today for communion. It's a honey wheat bread. Uh, so if you're allergic to honey, please uh, let me know <laughs> before I give it to you. But I never would have thought such a gathering could have been possible two or three years ago. And yet, here we are, out of what seems very dim and dark and hopeless, there is new life that is springing about. And that's because of you all. Have you understood all of this? I could say yes, but that wouldn't be honest. I don't understand it all. And it might be odd, especially for you to hear me say, do we really have to understand it all? I think it's important to try, absolutely. I think, though, there is equally uh, a valid way of looking at it to say, we don't have to understand it all. We just have to be open to the possibility that our expectations can be shattered if we can let go of our ego and just see where the Spirit might take us. I think it's then, that's how I could honestly answer the question, have you understood all of this? I can't say with 100% that I do, but I can tell you that I'm trying. Amen.
Please rise as we reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. Prayers of the people. Father, we pray for you, for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may glorify God. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially pres pres presiding bishop. Michael Curry and Bishop Polis and Reed and Trinity Tulsa. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who are governed hold authority in the nations of the world, especially President Joe Biden, Governor Kevin Stitt, and Mayor Stan Booker. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, especially Andrea, Bill, Bob, Caroline, Chuck, Dave, David, Don, Helen, James, James S, Jean, Jeannie, Joe, June, Catherine, Laverne, Leo, Lucille, Luke, Mad, Mad's family, Nora, Rose, and Sherry, for the hungry, the oppressed, those in prison, and those in the military. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the de departed an eternal rest. Let life perpetual shine upon them. We praise for your saints and who have turned into joy. May we also come to share your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of and those of others, especially birthdays for Jennifer, for Beth and Elizabeth, for Brava, and our grand and your granddad. Uh -huh. Cora's granddad. It's his birthday. Thank you. Seriously? Sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people and in the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are glorious, gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, 
now and forever. Amen.
song. <laughs> yes. Um, well, it's going to be fun to do, that's yes. for sure. It, it, we'll have a good time doing it. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them, them to, to the, the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and good and joyful to give you thanks, all holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy. You have filled us in all creation with your blessing and fed us with your constant love. You have redeemed us in Jesus Christ and knit us into one body. Through your spirit, you replenish us and call us to fullness of life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please stand, sit, or kneel. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we failed to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us. And so we violated your creation, abused one another, and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then, in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word, made mortal flesh in Jesus born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory, giving himself freely to death on the cross. He triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his friends, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this. For the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to sing. Forgive us 
all our sins as we forgive those who harm us and lead us not away from you but deliver Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Taste and see, taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Taste and see, taste and see the goodness of the Lord. I 
I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall always be on my lips. My soul shall glory in the Lord, for He has been so good to me. Taste and see, taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Taste and see, taste and see the goodness of the Lord, of the Lord. Glorify the Lord with me. Together let us all praise his name. I called the Lord and he worshipped me. From all my troubles he set me free. Taste and see, taste and see. The goodness of the Lord. Taste and see, taste and see. The goodness of the Lord, of the Lord. Worship the Lord, all you people. see that God is good. In Him we need put all our trust. Taste and see, taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Taste and see, Continuing together, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, may it be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Tell out my soul the greatness of the Lord. Unnumbered blessings give my spirit voice. Tender to me the praise. 
promise of his word. In God my Savior shall my heart rejoice. Tell out my soul the greatness of his might. Powers and dominions lay the glory by. Proud hearts and stubborn wills are put to flight. The hungry fed, the humble lifted high. Tell out my soul the glories of the word. Firm is his promise and his mercy sure. Tell out my soul the greatness of the Lord to children's children and forevermore. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.